so in the beginning of the tech tech when uh, it first ventured into this uh, defense industry it was only based on land system right so now after that we have seen that there is a requirement you know coming from the navy and also from the air force and also from the security you know sector you know uh, so we are we think that uh, rather than concentrating on the land system we might as well venture onto because we have strong partnership uh, with uh, different different companies from all over the world so we think that we can offer them provide them the best solution to suit their requirement uh, at any point of time unmanned system whether it is a uh, in the air or also uh, on uh, the surface of uh, water surface so this is the in thing uh, right now right because people tend to uh, emphasize on the safety uh, aspect of the personnel but at the same time we can uh, achieve whatever the mission given uh, by uh, utilizing fully utilizing equipment that we have we have this uh, you know uh, mainly to, to do the tasking for uh, reconnaissance surveillance you know not only limited to the uh, on military missions but also uh, to the commercial sector as well for example we have uh, a lot of palm oil plantations in malaysia uh, we have also borders we have also uh, developed something together uh, in collaboration with the local uh, university right uh, as you can see over there right, this is something uh, which we do not have to uh, deploy the soldier or the people to man uh, the vessel right you can just deploy it remotely control from the uh, from the base uh, station right because we cannot expect so we need to be ready for that so rather than uh, you know putting our people in the front line so we will use uh, this kind of uh, equipment or, or, or tools you know to achieve whatever mission given we received the invitation from the government of uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to participate in the trial so we did send uh, two vehicles to participate, uh, the 25mm, IAV 25mm variant and also the AAV 30mm variant. So we give them uh, both the options for the infantry and also for the armored regiment. So we went uh, there back in September last year. Uh, we clocked about almost uh, 4,000 kilometers going all over the uh, desert and the challenging terrain, you know, the different uh, weather environment so uh, then we alhamdulillah we managed to finish and complete uh, the trial well general starlight company or gsci was established in 1992 we're based in toronto ontario uh, we're a Canadian company and uh, we manufacture a full line of night vision, thermal imaging and uh, fusion systems. So our primary clients are military and police, but some of our systems are also available for civilian customers. Uh, our newest product for the Asian market is uh, our fusion weapon site. It's called Quadro S. First of all, we introduced it approximately one year ago. Um, it has been a very successful product in North America, and Europe, Australia. And Asian market is very um, interesting for us. Uh, we see there is a lot of potential and uh, we're trying to introduce something new, unique uh, for our customers in the, in the Asian region. Quadro S is our newest uh, fusion system. So what it does is it has uh, two channels. One channel is a thermal, which is this, and we also have a uh, visible and near infrared channel, which is this camera over here. So you can select and work in um, day mode, night mode, thermal imaging mode, and also there is a unique mode called fusion. So what it does, it's a superposition of uh, thermal and visible near infrared images all in one. Because as everybody knows, um, night vision and thermal imaging, they have all their own disadvantages. For example, night vision cannot see in completely a dark environment. Uh, thermal imaging cannot see through glass. But when you have in fusion mode, it's both channels, they complement each other. So this is how you achieve 100% detection in pretty much any lighting or weather conditions. So the entire system was uh, designed, developed, built in Canada. Uh, the way we implement fusion mode is our patented technology. We hold the patent for it. So, and this is why it's a unique 
uh, product to the market and uh, with hopefully with this product um, it will make the world a little bit safer place. This device can be used in three uh, configurations. It can be used as a handheld, you can use it as a camcorder, you can also just in this configuration, use it as a standalone weapon site. Or if you replace the eyepiece with a clip-on adapter, you can use it in front of your daytime optics. So this part here is a keyboard. Its um, main, main characteristics is a, there's buttons, let's say uh, there's a on-off button. There, there's mode button that switches between day, night, thermal, and fusion mode. This is the eyepiece. Uh, used for um, standalone day daytime and nighttime observation. Uh, can be replaced with a clip-on adapter for usage with uh, existing daytime scope. Those two are the side rails and side and top rails used to attach additional equipment such as uh, infrared illuminator, laser rangefinder, and many others. Right here on this side you see two connectors, one for power and another for video and uh, remote control. There is also a battery. Uh, it's powered by four AA batteries. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just show you in just one sec. It's only four AA batteries, and inside you can see a slot for a micro SD card. So this device also has a optional video recorder, video recording capability. At the front we have a uh, thermal channel, as well as visible and near infrared uh, channel. We're trying to make the world a safer place. We introduce new technologies to the market. We design, develop uh, new products to help our military and law enforcement professionals all over the world. Hello, my name is Ian Gethin. I'm the marketing director for uh, Talos Australia. Um, this is the latest version of the Bushmaster, the MR6. So the Bushmaster is a multi-role protected vehicle uh, and we've been building this for a few years now and we've built almost 1,200 vehicles to date. The Australian Defence Force has got now 1,000 in service and then we've got almost 200 vehicles in service with seven other nations around the world in a variety of roles. So the, uh, a lot of the concentration on the design of the Bushmaster today has been for the Australian Defence Force and their requirements. Um, and we've realised that um, other defence forces have got some different requirements and uh, we wanted to put some new, uh, some modifications to the, uh, to the Australian spec. So, for example, the most obvious, uh, the most obvious change is the front doors and uh, we're also offering uh, additional armour, uh, new, a new power plant, so uh, an upgrade to the existing diesel engine uh, with a new transmission to go with that. Uh, also an increase in the payload capability of the vehicle uh, and a number of options um, to basically give some uh, option packs for our customers. So this particular Bushmaster, they all, they all look quite similar from the outside, the hull is essentially the same. This is in a troop configuration uh, and probably most of the Bushmasters we've built have been troop carriers. Uh, the engine, it's, a, it's a, a diesel engine. What's unique about the Bushmaster, and it's what, made it, what has made it very reliable in the field, is it's quite easy to actually pull out the entire drivetrain. You can even change it within three hours if required. Well, we still see a strong market for this vehicle. It's a medium-sized vehicle. Uh, it's highly protected. Uh, it's proven, and with the, new, with the new features that we're introducing, we believe it is still a lot of interest from a lot of armed forces. It's, uh, we, we, the Australian Army will be uh, in using them for decades to come. So it's well supported. Uh, Talos can integrate different mission kits um, for uh, d different customer requirements. So it's not just the, you know, the integrity of the vehicle is proven, its ability to not only be reliable in the field but to protect people on board. Uh, its flexibility is well proven but we also have a strong international support network so we can look after our customers into the future. The most obvious new feature for the Bushmaster is the your new uh, driver and passenger front doors. This particular vehicle has actually just uh, been in extensive testing with the United Kingdom Ministry of Defence. So here we've got uh, a different locker option. Um, 
the, uh, the lockers that we have for the Australian vehicles are not suitable for all customers, so this gives them more flexibility, obviously, with that. Uh, so another option that we're offering is by removal of the, uh, the rear wheel, we can actually extend the rear corner of the hull. And that gives us more options in terms of internal space. It gives us uh, more flexibility for the ambulance layout. It also increases the, uh, the interior options for the troop carrier. Uh, for example, the Australian Defence Force would operate this vehicle in a troop carrier configuration with uh, eight, uh, eight people on board, two in the front and then eight in the rear compartment. Uh, we can offer an additional option now of uh, an additional two seats, uh, making it a total of 12, 12 uh, seats. They're all blast protected, they all offer the same level of protection as the Bushmasters we built before. And that's the, that's the important element of this vehicle. The basic fundamental um, characteristics of the Bushmaster, which have made it such an effective vehicle, remain unchanged. We're just trying to offer some different options for, for customers who have requirements that are different to the Australian Defence.